Hi everyone and welcome. I'm out here in my yard and it's a little bit late in the day. It's almost sunset and it's been raining so it's dark anyway, but I've um, I've just gotten home from my mom's house and compliments of her. I've got this bag of strawberry which had at one point been frozen and has since thawed since I bought it home and it's full of all this strawberry juice and um, and it reminded me that I've got this container here full of material. This is the stuff that came out of my outdoor worm bag. And it was two days ago that I sifted through the material. So I took all the castings that went through the sifter and put them into one bin. And everything that got caught in the bin, as well as all the worms, were left in this container right here. And, you know, with all the sifting and the moving around and all the shaking and everything else. I just didn't want to um, kind of overstress the worms by um, maybe going through like a light separation to try to uh, get the worms out of this material. Um, so along those same lines of, you know, trying to minimize the um, strain on these little guys in order to separate them from the material that they inhabit right now, my thought was to maybe try to set up a baiting um, situation. And I have this um, plastic mesh bag. A number of people have been doing this lately and I figured I'd give it a try. I, I had one laying around. So I placed a paper bag inside of it as well as a paper towel. And I figured I would soak all the, um, I would say soak all that paper with some of these juices from the strawberry as well as some of these shredded pieces of paper. And then we would sink this thing right down within this material and it seems to me like it's kind of like an irresistible um, kind of a bait bomb here. I got this funny feeling that this is just going to be chock full of worms in, in virtually no time at all. So I was, I was just going to, you know, start putting this thing together. I figured why not just grab the video camera and use my little forehead mounted attachment to capture the action. And then... Uh, this way everyone will know what the outcome was of my um, my outdoor worm bag and the container that the majority of the adult worms ended up in. So let's see, I'm kind of winging it here. Oh my goodness, got a really noisy bird up here on the bush. So, you know, kind of, kind of winging it, like I said earlier. So I figured these juices, um, you know, actually, you know what I was thinking? Maybe if I were to just pour all the juices into this container here, of which I didn't even know how much there would be. It seemed like a whole lot more at the time, I guess. <laughs> Maybe if I give it a little bit of a squeeze. And, you know, it's all red stuff, and I thought it was strawberries, but I believe there's also a tomato in here. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, there is a tomato in here too. Um, all frozen. This tomato, I can still feel the um, the frozen insides of this thing. So uh, my idea here was to use all this stuff to create sort of an irresistible little package here for these worms to be drawn to. So I'm going to um, soak all of this paper in this tomato slash strawberry juice, which I guess from a human's perspective seems a little gross. But I got a feeling from a worm's perspective, it's going to be um, downright delicious. So I was going to just take this stuff after it sucks up all of this moisture and throw it right into here. Kind of spread it all around. And then that paper bag that's um, kind of lining the, um, the mesh sack. That'll also start sucking in all those juices. And what I did too, it might not be visible, but I went through here with a knife and I put a whole bunch of puncture holes through this paper bag so that it doesn't become a um, an obstacle that the worms would be un unable to go through. The idea is that they'll um, eventually come up against this bag, which is soaked in delicious juices and full of little tiny holes through which they can crawl. And and then they're just gonna come inside this bag here and gorge themselves on all this delicious, yummy food, all kinds of delicious strawberry, the leaves, 
and even a frozen tomato in the middle for good measure. I guess I'll stick my finger through the tomato just to make sure it's opened up. I think I'll just even puncture it like that just to make sure it's just about as irresistible as it can be. <laughs> so I got a feeling that this is going to start soaking through pretty soon here. And um, I guess just to cover it all up, I bought these finely screened bits of leafy matter. I thought that that would be kind of a good cover. And once this gizmo is placed down within this container, right down here in the middle to make it really easy for all the worms that are in the system to get to it, I got a feeling this thing's going to be occupied by worms in very little time. So usually I'll put a glove on, but you know what? I'll just rinse off at the garden hose when I'm done. <laughs> so this stuff is everything that got caught in the screen. We got a peach pit here. We've got all kinds of peanut shells, all kinds of stuff mixed into this material here. And there were points in time when I remember seeing lots and lots of worms in here. And I'm a little bit surprised that we're, we're not even encountering any yet. I'm just wondering where they could be. I mean, I do remember seeing huge worm ball at one point as we were going through this material here. And if there had been some sort of exodus of worms leaving this material, then I'm sure I would have spotted it. But okay, now we're talking. I could see some worms squirming around now. Let's just continue probing through here a little bit more as long as we're at it. And as long as my hands are all filthy anyway. I just do remember encountering some big, huge mounds of worms in this material at certain points. And I'm just guessing that there's probably something in this material that's maybe already drawing them to a particular spot. So I was definitely under the impression that this has a good number of worms in it. And maybe they're just scattered all about. That's typically been what we found whenever we would go looking through our worm bag. It was kind of a rare occasion that we would encounter a big huge mound of worms in any, any one given place. But it's usually around now when we're kind of expecting that we're not going to see a worm party. It's usually when we end up exp um, bumping into it. So maybe they're just kind of scattered all about. Maybe there is no one particular place that's drawing them all near um, to each other. But I definitely see them all over the place, everywhere within this material, just scattered all about. Because this material is chock full of all kinds of goodness, all kinds of edible materials. And it is a little bit dry, I must admit. You can see even a lot of little tiny worms down there at the bottom. So I've got a feeling, once they sense this bag full of strawberry juice and tomato juice, as well as the strawberry itself and all the leaves, all the little strawberry tops and everything else. I've got a feeling that this um, little collection bag is going to become kind of a hot spot for the worms to congregate in. So I'm going to dig it down deep, pretty much get it down as deep as I can. And I can hear the rain starting, so I should really try to get this job finished. <laughs> because it's going to be uh, raining on me any moment now. I still need to put the trash out and close the car windows. So let's not dawdle. Let's get this job done. But I really wanted to kind of get to this next phase of trying to round up some of these worms that used to occupy my worm bag. Um, just as a quick reminder, the main objective for a lot of these worms was going to be to start an indoor worm system using these worms. And it's, um, it's my assumption that all, most if not all of the worms in this system are red wigglers. And this will be kind of um, my reintroduction of red wigglers back into my, um, back into my wormery. So what was covering things up here was this piece of newspaper. And you can see it's fairly damp because I ran downstairs after we got done with this bin. Uh, the other day, two days ago, and I did grab this plastic covered uh, piece of cardboard, 
with which to cover up because I did sense that the material was a little bit dry and I just didn't want it to become overly dry. I wanted the moisture to remain in there and kind of continue recirculating. And I didn't worry about an absence of air flow because, you know, you saw that material. It's all very large chunk, loose stuff, stuff that should be pretty, um, pretty free flowing of air. So I'm not worried about anaerobic conditions here, but um, I'm starting to see raindrops accumulating on this piece of cardboard. I'm gonna get this set up, put away. I got a few things to clean up and put away over here, but you know, that's boring. I'm not gonna take your time with that. But before I go really quick, let me just say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.